Thai. I'm going to give you an overview of one of Market Samurai's most popular co components, its keyword research module. So let's jump in. When we undertake keyword research, typically the process looks like this. Firstly, we need to generate a number of keywords that we can use as our working base. Secondly, we need to start filtering those keywords on criteria that are important to us. Common filtering criteria that we need to look at are traffic. Clearly, we, we, if we're building web pages to, to attract people to our website, we need a minimum amount of traffic. We've also got competition. We don't want to go after keywords that are overly competitive. Thirdly, there's commercial value, and we'll talk about that a bit more as we go through. And fourthly, we need to make sure that the keywords that we're targeting are actually relevant to us. A common mistake that we see is people find keywords that are, are technically very good, but aren't actually that closely related to the product or service that they're in, and so they get suboptimal results. So let's jump into Market Samurai now. The first thing we need to do is, is after we've opened Market Samurai, is to create a new project. And whenever we create a new project, we need to enter a starting keyword. So we'll use the well-worn example from internet marketing of dog training. Now within the dog training niche, um, there is going to be a whole range of keywords for us to look at. We can also specify what language we're interested in. We're going to go for English. And secondly, what country we're interested in. In this case, we're going to select all countries. But I would note that if you're doing something specific to a country, you can select that. And uh, also there are sometimes interesting opportunities to be had on, on keywords that might be too competitive globally. If you will focus your efforts on a specific country by hosting and, and other things in that country, you can, uh, you can target keywords and, and there's, there's interesting opportunities to be had there. But we're going to start off globally and, and go from there. So again, Market Samurai has a range of modules that you can use for various tasks, but we're going to jump into keyword research because that's our focus. When we start keyword research, we need to find a number of keywords that are potential candidates for, uh, for us to look at. And uh, we, can, we can pick those up from the Google Synonym tool, which will give us a couple of hundred keywords to look at. Or we can use the Google Search Keywords set of keywords, which in, in generally gives us a, a, a larger number, but they're typically the long tail derivatives, which are very useful to look at. But for our example, we, we need to pick one. So we'll, we'll go with the Google Synonym tool data. And uh, whilst, this is, whilst this is bringing back information, I'll need to enter into capture. I'll go. A couple of points to note. Firstly, if we had keywords that we already knew that were interesting to us, maybe from our AdWords campaign or our search logs, uh, we can drop those in the Add Keywords um, section. And second, secondly, we can also say that here in positive keywords, there are certain keywords we must have. So if we said we're only interested in um, any keywords that have the word dog or dogs, and uh, if we update that, we just knocked out uh, something in the order of 30 keywords. Similarly, if we wanted to say we are not interested in any keywords or any key phrases with the word puppy in there, we could, uh, we could write the word puppy in here, and there was one instance of that. So we've, we've already cut our list down from uh, uh, approximately 200 to 171 keywords um, based on, on what we were looking at. So, uh, and, and, and one final filter on this page is I'll often select my minimum number of keywords as two um, so that single word phrases like dog, dogs, um, puppy, etc., uh, are eliminated. We only want phrases with two or more words, and uh, that can be as an easy filter we often apply. The rule being that single word keywords are generally too competitive to, uh, to go after in, in most cases. So let's, uh, let's click Analyze Keywords, and uh, we're now in, the, in the, sort of the, the core of this keyword research module. And again, we want to start applying filters to the data that we're seeing, but let me explain for a moment. We see here dog training. This is saying that dog training and its derivative keywords, um, so keywords that include dog training, are searched 40,000 times per day in Google. Now, if we want to see the number of times the, the word dog training is exactly searched, we can drop this list down and we can select exact. Or the number of times it's used as a specific phrase, we can select phrase. So there's, and there's more on that in, uh, in the Market Samurai information. So we're going we're gonna to stick with, with our broad match search but we can, start, we can start to apply some filters. So we could say hypothetically that we're only interested in, uh, in keywords that have a minimum of 100 searches per day. So we've gone from, I think it was somewhere in the well above 100, down to 91 potential candidate keywords by taking our search criteria and saying that we're only interested in keywords as I scroll to the bottom with a minimum of 100 searches per day. 
Now I'm actually going to remove that filter for a moment and you'll see that the, uh, the, the keywords drop back in. By removing that, key, that, uh, that filter, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use a different measure which is SEOT, this second column. Now let me take a moment to explain that. SEOT is based on the concept that if you have a keyword that is getting 100 searches per day in Google and you rank number one on that keyword, you are not going to get 100 people to your website based on that keyword. What will happen is, of the 100 people that search, not everybody will click. Some people will simply click nothing. And not everybody will click on the first result. The, the, the Google search results, uh, the traffic is shared amongst the, all the entries on the page. It's certainly skewed very heavily towards the first, with number, position number two and three taking um, large chunks as well. But what, what SEOT is, is SEOT is a measure of the number of people that you could, hyper, you, you could um, potentially get to your website if you ranked number one for that given phrase. So SEOT for me is a little bit more of a realistic measure and it's essentially a, a ratio that it's a smaller percentage of the number of searches. So I'm actually going to set 100 in here for SEOT and now we're down to 56 potential keywords. So we've gone from 200 with a few filters down to 56 potential keywords. Uh, I'm also going to drop in here under phrase to broad match if I, if I add that back in. Uh, under phrase to broad match, I'm going to I'm going to enter in here 15 as a as a as a minimum phrase to broad match ratio. Now that ratio, there's a little bit more to it than I can explain in this video, but the effect of doing this is it will often remove keywords that are in um, in odd orders that humans wouldn't normally use, and and are, and so it, it gets rid of a little bit of rubbish for us. And in this case, it's only knocked out one other case, but uh, but it is as a general rule for a quick overview. I typically like to use freight, the, the PBR ratio of 15. So we've now got our, our keywords knocked down by traffic, but we haven't dealt with commercial value and we haven't dealt with competition. Let's have a look at commercial value for a moment. The old way that, uh, that I would generally look at this, um, going back a while, is I would look at the AdWords cost per click. Because for me, if I click analyze keywords and we get this data back, the, the AdWords cost per click is a measure of how much people are willing to pay to uh, to uh, rank in the AdWords section of Google's results for a given keyword. But if you think about it, it's actually the combination of two things. It's Yes, it's what people are willing to pay. So some keywords here are worth, you know, $1.20 says that dog boarding is not this, doesn't have the same commercial value as, say, dog training. But secondly, it's also, I'm also interested in the traffic. The commercial value of a given keyword is a combination of what the, uh, what the value of that keyword is in terms of um, what estimated here by what people are willing to spend and, and the logic being that people are generally willing to spend more for keywords that bring them um, higher quality buyers and that if it's not happening, if, if, if people are spending money on a keyword that's not bringing them buyers, they will actually stop bidding because they'll, in long term they'll go out of business. And so, but it's the AdWords cost per click in combination with the traffic. And this measure here, this SEOV measure, actually multiplies the cost per click with the SEOT to give us a ratio that says, okay, which of our keywords are the most commercially valuable keywords? And you see that some keywords here essentially have a, a theoretical commercial value of say $27,000 for dog supplies down to dog temperament with a theoretical commercial value of say $38. So I'm going to knock that out. I'm going to put a minimum in here on SEOV of say 200. So we've cut that down and we're now down to 44 active keywords. The final component of our research is the level of competition. So we click at, we, we, I'm going to click on SEO competition, which is a measure for that. And we're going to click on analyze keywords and, uh, and away we go. Now the SEO competition uh, component, what that does is that goes to, to on each of these keywords and says to Google, um, run that search and, and what is the number of uh, pages that appear as competing web pages for each of those, uh, for each of those search results. So you'll see here that if we if we scroll to the top, we've got some with you know six million competing web pages and others with much smaller numbers. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I like to, we, we like to see uh, somewhere less than one hundred thousand. And uh, this is this is a bit variable in the fact that if you have a high high authority website that is well regarded by Google, you may tackle higher um, uh, more competitive keywords. But as a general rule of thumb, one hundred thousand is about our max. And uh, we're actually comfortable if we see uh, less than 30,000 is good and less than 10,000 is great. 
And if you're looking at some the market here for dog training, which is quite a broad market and it's going to be quite competitive, it has a very we're seeing a lot of very high SEOC counts here. But if you're looking at something more niche, you know, even let's say you're looking at dog training schools New York, that is typically a more niche keyword, and you would expect for that to have um, lower number of competing pages. So let's run a filter here, and we press the little plus again, and we say, okay, let's put in 100,000 as the maximum number of competing web pages that we will we will accept. And so we're now down to 12 active pages out of our starting pool of 200. And these are the phrase, the pages that have still got traffic. They've got commercial value because people are bidding them on, on them in AdWords at, at reasonable prices, and they've also, but they don't look to be massively competitive. Now, this is this SEO C value is is really only an approximate measure for allowing us to do a quick analysis across a large number of keywords. But ultimately, it's the front page of Google that really counts. You're actually only competing against 10 competitors for your keyword. It's the 10 competitors that currently hold the top 10 positions in Google. And that's what the SEO competition tab over here is all about. And so we're going to have a look at that in a moment in our, in our next video. So check that out. And this, comp this particular tab, I should mention, is really where a lot of search engine professionals get quite excited and can see some real insights that they potentially haven't seen before. So, uh, so stay tuned and, and check out the next video and, and thank you for your time.